Hallelujah. We want to say thank you to uh, Sister Rhonda Howell for these beautiful flowers in memory of Harry and Carolyn Reed. Thank you for adorning the sanctuary with those today. Amen. 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 Shall we stand together and prepare to pray and get out of the way? Yeah. And let the Lord yeah. Be, yeah. What the Lord will have us to do. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, Father, we thank you for your spirit on today. We've gathered in your house, Lord. We've prayed prayers in your name. We've sang songs in your name. We've given a tithe and offering in your name. Now, God, we need to hear from your word. So I pray as your servant that you would take me out of self. God, wrap me up, tie me up, and tangle me up in your spirit that what I will say will be pleasing in your sight. Last but not least, God, do allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, for you are my Christ, my Redeemer, my Lord, and my Savior. But most of all, God, I found you to be my very best friend. And all of God's people said amen, amen, amen. 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 Revelations chapter number three, Revelations chapter number three, verses 7 through 13. I want to read uh, from a different translation so it may read a little different than yours. I want to read from the paraphrased Bible because I want to get the core of what the Lord Jesus is saying uh, through simple language, if you will. Amen? Amen. Amen. Revelation 3, verses 7 through 13, the paraphrased Bible records it as such. Write this letter to the leader of the church in Philadelphia. This message is sent to you by the one who is holy and true and has the key of David to open what no one can shut and to shut what no one can open. I know you well. I know you well and you aren't strong, but you have tried to obey and have not denied my name. Therefore, I have opened a door to you that no one can shut. Amen. Note this. I will force those supporting the cause of Satan while claiming to be mine, but they aren't for they are lying. To fall at your feet and to acknowledge that you are the ones that I love. Because you have patiently obeyed me despite the persecution, therefore I will protect you from the time of great tribulation and temptation, which will come upon the world to test everyone alive. Look, I'm coming soon, so hold tightly to the little strength that you have, so that no one would take away your crown. As for the one who conquers, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. And he will be secure and I will go out no more. And I will write my God's name on him and he will be a citizen in the city of my God. The new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, from God, from my God. And he will have my new name inscribed upon him. Verse 13 says, let all who can hear. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I, I want to go back to verse number 8, very quickly, verse number 8, where it says, I know you well. You aren't strong, but you've tried to obey and have not denied my name. Therefore, I've opened a door to you that no one can shut. I want to preach this morning as the Lord would lead from the thought, we're under surveillance. We're under surveillance. We're under surveillance. My brothers and sisters, surveillance is when somebody is watching you. Oftentimes, when there is criminal act 
activity. The police, the FBI, the CIA, the DEA, and all other associations of crime fighters will put certain people under surveillance. Again, you all know that I like to watch TV, and I'm really late getting into it, but lately I've been watching Power. For those of you who may watch Power, you'll know that uh, James and his family, Ghost as he's called on the show, is under surveillance. Means that, if I can put it plain, the popo -po <laughs> are watching because they believe that he's involved in some type of criminal activity. But in order for them to bring him to court and to make him pay uh, for his crime, they have to gain a certain amount of evidence that they can bring into court and present their case to the judge. And when they come to court, they have to be able to prove the accusations that they're charging against the criminal. And brothers and sisters, just like police will surveil, will watch criminals, I need to suggest to us this morning that the Lord Jesus is watching us. I wonder what type of church the Lord would have Mount Moriah to be. Maybe a more important question would be, uh, does the Lord want us to be a big church or a medium-sized church or a little church? The truth of the matter is the Lord really is not concerned with how many people we have in the pew. But the Lord is concerned with the hearts of those who occupy the pew. When we survey, when we survey these seven churches, we will discover that none of the things uh, mentioned, the, not the size of the church, the type of the church, those things really do not matter to the Lord. For when Jesus looks at a church, he's not looking at the outward things, but rather he's looking for a deeper sign of growth, faith, fervent love, and abiding hope. He wants his church to be motivated by love, founded on truth, uh, strong under pressure, and unashamed of his name. Of the seven churches that we will look at, uh, only two churches, uh, the church at Smyrna and the church at Philadelphia, are the only two churches in these letters uh, that receive no words of condemnation. And it is co coincidental, not coincidental, that both churches, uh, according to scripture, were facing strong opposition because uh, of their witness. Hard times uh, generally make for strong churches. Especially when hard times come before the church refuses, uh, because the church refuses uh, to compromise the gospel. We're under surveillance. When we started this series, we looked at the church at Ephesus, and it was a careless church. Ephesus was a big church, an active working church, a, a well-taught church, a weathered church uh, that had faced many trials, uh, but yet it was a church that faced a rebuke. Uh, and so often we look at a large, active church uh, as a healthy congregation, uh, but often they are not really as healthy as they look to be. Uh, they look healthy on the outside, but they're really sick on the inside. Uh, and Jesus told them, the church at Ephesus uh, that they had lost their first love for God uh, and we want to make sure uh, that we're always more concerned about who we are in our heart than just about being concerned about what we do. Then Jesus says, well, let me show you the church in Smyrna. Smyrna was a crushed church. Crown church. They faced pressure and poverty and put down, but they faithfully endured and so they received condemnation from the Lord. The Lord tells them that persecution will come, but continue to. 
to live faithfully and he will reward greatly. We want to be faithful even when things get going rough and tough. We looked at the church at Pergamum. It was a compromising congregation. It was a city where the devil himself had set up camp, but the church had tolerated Satan's presence. We want to make sure we don't compromise the word of God. Then he wrote a letter to the church at Thyatira. Thyatira was an evil congregation. The people had followed self proclaimed prophetess who taught them to deny the truth uh, and to accept what was wrong instead of what was right. But today he has us looking at Philadelphia, a committed church. Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Revelation chapter 3 verses 7 through 13 records the letter to the church at Philadelphia about 35 miles southeast of Sardis because it was located near the fault line and therefore earthquakes were a constant threat to this city of brotherly love. It was intended to be a kind of missionary city. To introduce Greek culture to the surrounding region, it was built on a narrow pass between two mountain ranges. Philadelphia stood as a doorway to the rest of Asia Minor. The church in that city was the youngest and smallest of the seven churches of Revelation chapter 3. Though they were small in number, the Bible says the Lord opened the door because they were faithful to the cause of Christ. God's desire for his his people has always been for us to be a witness, to be a city on a hill, a people who are loved by God. God led us, a God led congregation. If you go back through the annuals of history, you will find that God led Abraham to the land of Israel. Yes, it was a dry and arid land, but the, but, but 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 God led him there because God knew he would do a great work in that place. Because all God planned was for all nations on earth to be blessed through the Jews. And now for us today, God still has work for us to do. Yes, we realize that we cannot do what God has called us to do by sitting in here on our comfortable pews, under our pretty chandeliers, with our nice air conditioning in the summer and heat in the winter. I believe the Bible told us to go ye therefore preaching, teaching, baptizing in the name of the Lord. He wants us to be about our Father's business. We are to be a church. We need to realize that God's missionary plan remains the same as it did in the day of Philadelphia. First Peter tells us that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy a people who belong to God that we may declare the praises of the one who called us out of darkness and into the marvelous light. The reason some of us don't get excited of that particular that particular scripture is because you're still living in the darkness. Some of you don't get excited. You can't go beyond where you are and do beyond what God has blessed you to do because you're still too selfish. Some of us are still caught up in the church of Ephesus. Uh, some of us are still caught up uh, in the church of Thyatira, but the Lord said, if you're going to be uh, the church that I called you to be, uh, you need to understand uh, that I got you under surveillance. Uh, and you need to know no matter where you go, uh, no matter what you do, or no matter what you say, uh, I got eyes everywhere. Uh, I got ears everywhere. Uh, I see everything you do, uh, and I hear everything you say. Uh, you under something. Yeah. Mm. And I'm watching your every step. I know at Christmas time we declare Santa Claus is making a list, checking it twice, trying to find who's naughty and nice. But I believe the truth of the matter is the law has a wide attack on our phone conversation. 
the Lord has a tracking device on our vehicles. The Lord has a camera in our homes because he has us under surveillance and he's watching everything that we do. He says, I need you to understand that uh, I know that you're not strong. But I see uh, that you have tried to obey my word. Verses 7 and 8, the first thing you need to understand is while the Lord has us under, uh, under surveillance, uh, number one, he, he says that we are a highly commended church. Uh, it's right there in verse 7. He says this message sent to you by the one who is holy and true uh, and that he has the key of David, uh, the key of David to open uh, what no one can shut and to shut what no one can open. Uh, yes, we've seen a lot of criticisms uh, in the, uh, from the Lord in the first five letters, uh, but if you notice that the church at Philadelphia, there's not one negative word of rebuke uh, of all the seven churches. Uh, this is the one that we would aspire to be like uh, of the seven churches represented. Uh, we got to be a church like Philadelphia because they represented the seven periods of history from the time of Jesus Christ uh, to the last and evil days. Uh, but now the Lord introduces himself uh, and he says, listen, I'm holy and I'm true. Uh, and because this city in which the church was located was filled with heathenism uh, and paganism, uh, there were pagan temples everywhere. But the Lord says, I commend those of you who have held true to the word of the Lord. God says, I'm proud of you who read your word. I'm proud of you who study your word. I'm proud of you who know how to fast and pray. I'm proud of you who know how to call on the name of the Lord. I'm proud of you for those who know that I am the one in true and living God. There is no God goes on. He says, I'm holy and I'm true. He says, I'm the one that's true. Uh, when he says, I'm true, that could be translated that he's the real thing. Yes, yes, the Greek gods in this time have been manufactured. And there were hundreds of Greek gods, but only Jesus could rightfully claim to be the one and true living God. He says, let me tell you something. Only I can open doors that nobody can open. And only I can close doors that nobody can close. Yes, the theme of this particular letter was evangelism and revival. And Jesus shows us himself as the one who holds the key of David, uh, who opens and closes the doors in our life. Uh, he is the Lord of the harvest. Uh, he is the head of the church, uh, and he is the sovereign ruler of the kingdom of God. Uh, Philadelphia was filled uh, with idolatry and paganism, uh, but there was still a remnant uh, who were in the church, uh, who kept their minds on the Lord. Uh, there were still those uh, who did the things that God called them to do, uh, and the Lord Some of us, we feel like we can do what we want to do, how we want to do it, because nobody can see us. But you need to understand the Lord has us under surveillance. He says, I am the one who can open doors that nobody can open. I'm the one who can close doors that nobody can close. He says, I know you are not strong, but I see that you have obeyed. You have kept my word, and you have not denied my name. And the truth of the matter is, you've got a lot of people who show up in church on Sunday morning, but they deny the name of Jesus the Christ. He says, but for those of you who have kept my word, and who have not denied my name. He says, I want you to be like those people who hail fast to the word of God. You kept my word and you've not denied my name. I heard David say, your word, Lord, have I hid in my heart and I will not sin against your word. Jesus says, I come to let you know that you are a commended church because you have kept my name. You've not denied my name. You held fast to the word of God. And my prayer for Mount Moriah is that we would take a stand and not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus the Christ. That we would be a church, not like any other church, but that we would be a church who's holding on to the word of the Lord. That we would be a church who says, for God I live and for God I die. It's my prayer that we would keep the Lord. 
righteous living. And that's why biblical purity is so important. If you show me somebody who believes wrong, I'll show you somebody who lives wrong. But if you show me somebody who believes in the word of God, I'll show you somebody who walks according to his word. Is there anybody here who can say, I know But God, I tried the best I can to walk right. I tried the best I can to live right. I tried to be an example to somebody else. I know that some people in church, they sit down like they're unbothered. Don't you worry about the naysayers. Don't you worry about the player haters. Don't you worry.
to my holy and true name. I know you will. Second thing about being under surveillance, number one, I'm highly commended. But number two, we're going to be deeply challenged. It says, I know you will. Can I just make it plain? Jesus says, I know y'all. I knew your mamas and your daddies. I knew your grandmama and your granddad. I know your great grandmama and your great granddad. He says, I know you well. And even though you're not really strong, but you have tried to obey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Philadelphia, they faced major obstacles. Uh, uh, they did not have all the resources that they needed. Uh, sometimes they were low in number, uh, uh, but they tried to obey. Uh, yes, might I suggest that if we were still to visit uh, these seven churches, uh, that, uh, that we, would, we would look at the outside and think that Philadelphia was not a whole lot to them. Uh, can I tell y'all a secret? Uh, when I got ready to come to Mount Moriah, uh, there was a whole lot of people uh, who were looking at us on the outside uh, and they were telling me you don't need to uh, go out there. Uh, there's not a whole lot to them. Uh, they don't have a whole lot of members. Uh, everybody done walked away from the church. Uh, but I need to let you know uh, that it's not how it looks on the outside. Uh, but it's what's going on on the inside. Uh, and the Lord told me to tell you uh, that if we keep on praying uh, like we pray He's going to open doors that nobody can open. I know that years ago, Dr. Mitchell said you were going to build a, you were going to build a fellowship hall. And we're still going to build it. But we got to keep doing what the Lord has called us to do. I believe in my spirit we may not be as strong as we should be. Trusting and we keep obeying and we keep on trying in the name of the Lord. And I believe if we keep on trying and we keep on obeying, that the Lord will open the floodgates of heaven and Mount Moriah Baptist Church will be a center for the hope, it'll be a help to the hurting, it'll be food for the hungry, it'll be clothes for the enemy. For the naked, my Mariah will be the kind of church where people can come in and learn of Jesus the Christ. My Mariah will be the kind of church we're going to have some ups and some downs. We're going to gain some people and we're going to lose some people. But the Lord said, because you trusted and the cause you obeyed. I will bless you. Therefore, I've opened a door that nobody can shut. Can I tell you a secret? Because we've done what the Lord has called us to do. The Lord has opened a door. That no man can shut. The Lord has sent people back that left before. The Lord has sent new people because we've trusted and because we've obeyed. Jesus said, When you are under surveillance, you will be highly commended. But he goes on in verses 10 through 13. Jesus says that you will be greatly compensated. In other words, I'm going to pay you for your faithfulness. I'm going to bless you for trusting in my name. The Bible said because you've been patient, you've obeyed. My word, in spite of what people say, I will protect you from the time of tribulation that will surely come. Jesus told me to 
to let you go. He's on his way back. I don't know when and I don't know where. But if you just hold on to the unchanging hand of the Lord, God said, I will change your name no more. Will you be remembered by your former name? But I have a new name. I have a new home over in glory. Is there anybody here who can testify that the Lord, he has me under surveillance. He's watching every move I make. He's watching every step I take. He's listening to every conversation. He's reading every email. He's reading every text message. You better be careful because the Lord, he has you under surveillance. He knows you're going out. He knows Trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to his own understanding and all our ways acknowledge him. He will, he will, he will direct my path. He will make a way out of no way. He will open doors. He will. Going out, coming in, I'm on ya. Thank you. 
He said, because because you've been faithful. He said, I'm coming quickly. Verse 11 says, hold on to what you have. That no one can take your crown. When you are a king and a queen, you don't take your crown off for nobody. I ain't even got to deal with you. Too hard. I done prayed too hard. 
church will open if you 